So appreciate everybody for being here. While you're here, just to get, let's get over 500, like this video and comment who you think is going to win the game. Just put ND or OSU. I don't care. Pick one, put it in the comments. Let's jump the algorithm and get over 500 people in here. Mm. So do that for me. But Chris, let's talk about Notre Dame. Kind of just as I broke them down, what I think they are, right? Okay. And here's what Notre Dame is walking into this game. You had Marcus Freeman, obviously new head coach. He was the defensive coordinator. He had a very average defense last year. That average defense last year is returning about 70% of their production, which is outside of the top 100 of returning production defensively. So I think they really have a question mark on defense. Although you get this perception that because Marcus Freeman is the new head coach, was the DC, they're going to be great on defense. There's a huge question mark on how good they'll actually be defensively. And they're going up against one of the best offenses, if not the best offense in college football. So I think that is a point of contention. The other, the other thing to watch for as we go through training camp, if you're following Notre Dame, following their training camp updates, they're having an offensive shift, right? Tommy Reese, the, the offensive coordinator, is stayed, didn't go with Brian Kelly, and he is in, in, or in South Bend to run a different offense. They had Jack Cohn, the Wisconsin transfer, a more statue quarterback throwing the football. Now they're going to enter former five-star um, – Tyler Buckner, who, who is more a, more of an athlete, right? A better athlete, so expect more RPOs, exp, expect more quarterback athletic plays. We won't call them quarterback runs, but where now he has a better athlete back there, and they can do different things. So I think the offense is going to transition a little bit. They lost their starting receiver. They lost their starting quarterback. They lost their, their best running back in Kyron Williams. I think they have talent coming in. They were going to have a kind of a dual battle at running back, and the one kid, Logan Diggs, got hurt. Uh, hurt his shoulder. And so now this Chris, Chris Tyree is expected to be the starter. They have a young group of receivers. They lost Kevin Austin, who was their best receiver. But what they do have, and I'm sure everyone already knows this, is they have the bona fide, probably the second best tight end in college football behind Brock Bowers of Georgia. Michael Mayer, the tight end, is probably a first round pick. Just a dominant, big, tall, long, like long tight end that can block and run. He is the, the focus point. I think if the, the defense is going to have to stop that RPO quarterback athletic play package, and then they're going to have to stop the tight end. So that's what I'm looking at right now. They, their offense is, 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 doesn't have a lot coming back. Now, what they did have last year, so rewind two years ago, they had the best offense line in the country. Right. Four of those left, all played in the NFL. And so last year, they struggled running the ball. Kyron Williams did not have that offensive line in front of him, so they struggled. But this year, all five of those guys come back. So that's a massive, massive win when it comes to offensive line play. You have the same five guys that played a full season together coming back. So that's that's a major positive in their direction. I don't, I, I mean, I don't <clears throat> think they have this dynamic group coming back. Certainly not like Ohio State. There's got a lot of questions to answer. Who's going to be their skill players? I mean, they have the kid who was a solid freshman last year, Lorenzo Styles. The kid Braden Lindsey that that had. He was the leading returning receiver outside of their tight end. I think they have skill there, but just keep an eye and watch how they develop during training camp because that's kind of where they're at today. There's a lot of question marks, a lot more than Ohio State, and those questions could be answered, and they could be a great football team. We will find that out as we get through training camp, but that's kind of my state of the fighting Irish for both Notre Dame fans and Buckeye fans. You talked about Tyler Buckner for a quick sec. Um, he's a guy that, you know, the, the school's recruiting him. I know Alabama wanted him. They recruited him. Sark Everybody was, was his recruiter. Yeah, uh, a top 100 kid, can move around a lot. And you referenced the running game two years ago from Notre Dame. I, I'll add to that, not just the offensive line being very good, but remember, Ian Book could move. He was like a true Tyler Reese quarterback, yeah. and he gave some teams fits. Do you think this is – they'll look to get back to that style of offense where they have him moving around Oh, they a definitely lot? are. I mean, I know Tommy Reese, I, 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 he interviewed one time uh, at Ohio State. Um, for what job? For what job? For a coordinator job when it came okay. over. So he, um, he he absolutely wants to do more RPOs. He wants he wants to have that style of offense, it's multiplicity, right? RPOs, you know, read plays, things like that that he couldn't really do with Jack Cohn. Jack Cohn was a statue. So uh, you're going to see a transition on offense. And the good thing is, Ohio State's going to have to prepare for that. They're going to have to watch Tommy Reese stuff before Notre Dame and you know, before Jack Cohn, at least. and um, and the other side of it is he doesn't know what the fuck Ohio State's going to do because Jim Knowles has his his system, but he also has a completely different personnel. So it's going to have different wrinkles than he had at Oklahoma State. So it's going to be a fun battle to watch and a fun story as it develops, right? As I've said before, I won't break down a game until we get through at least the first half of training camp. But I wanted to give you a picture of my opinion of where Notre Dame is today, you know, as we prepare for that huge week one matchup. 
So, so if you're Ohio State and you are looking at Notre Dame and breaking down film, I don't know when that starts, Zach. I don't know when kind of coordinators start doing install for specific uh, games, but especially game one. If you are going back and looking at games, Zach, do you think that the GAs have been instructed to kind of watch last year's Notre Dame offense? Or do you think because of the personnel style of Tyler, you think they go back two years and watch that Notre Dame team with? Uh, with I, I think they're, they're breaking down everything right now. They're breaking mm-hmm. down the last two years of Notre Dame film everywhere Tommy Reese has been. I mean, that's what you do, right? You If you don't know what, what a team's going to do or a new coordinator or a new quarterback that maybe has a different skill set, you break down anything you can find. They probably broke down the spring game. That was, not probably. They definitely broke down the spring game. Even though teams don't show their full offense or full defense in the spring game, they'll show you maybe a thing or two where you can say, okay, this is where they're headed and transitioned, right? They're, they're, they're breaking down everything. And then they'll run cutups based on whatever the coordinator believes their identity will be. We're talking about mobile quarterbacks a little bit. But obviously, uh, we think the Buckner kid can move way more than the Cone kid. Um, I think that's pretty clear based on the spring game. I like his short delivery. It's kind of like Manzellish. It's Ian Bookish, the way he kind of runs around out there. What kind of fits does that cause for a defensive coordinator and a defensive line coach in Larry Johnson? Like when you know that that guy's not going to be in the same spot every time. I mean, I mean, it's 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 tough, right? That's that's what you have to do offensively to a great defensive line or a great defensive end is you have to do all of that. We talked about it on the Will Anderson breakdown, like what would Ohio State do against a great pass rusher, right? That you have to do that. You have to move the the launch point. You can't just drop back and throw from the same spot every play because then the D line knows where they're going every play and they don't have to react to shit. You have to run draws. You have to run the ball on third down. You have to move the pocket. You have to chip and slide and double and do all of that to a great defensive end. So it's massive, and, and I think you're going to see more of that out of Notre Dame. Move him around a little bit. He's a good athlete. Like, Don't let these this defensive line that everyone thinks is going to be dynamic, don't let them tee off on this, this first-time starter. Let's not forget, we talked about it last year going to Minnesota. Being a first-time starter in this magnitude of a game Compared to C.J. Stroud, who's a seasoned veteran Heisman candidate in this magnitude of game. By the way, this is on the road for Notre Dame. Mm-hmm. Man, a massive challenge for a first-time starting quarterback. How do you manage that for the kid? Like That kid's I mean, got to be just feeling put unbelievable his, amounts of pressure. You have to put him in as many high-pressure, adverse situations in training camp as you possibly can. You have to turn crowd noise up like a motherfucker. Like Put him in adverse situations and try to develop that, that gun barrel toughness. And it still is not going to match it. There's going to be a growth from that kid during the game, or, or he might just crumble. I mean, you think about the horseshoe at night, your first time ever starting. One of the Maybe the best team in college football. Fuck. And your coach has been talking shit. And your coach has been talking shit. Yeah, right. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man, Tyler. Well, I mean, we'll see. I do want to ask you, Zach, just all the – I got the death beam out pointed at you. Getting a sucker out. Who has a better chance of pulling off the upset? Um, Texas over Alabama or Notre Dame over Ohio State? Ooh, that's tough. I'm so fucking good at this. I'm so fucking good. Um. Where's Texas, Alabama is not in Tuscaloosa, right? No, I don't believe so. No, that's, that's, I think that's a uh, neutral site or a neutral site. So I'll say Texas. I mean, it's, it's equal, right? It's almost Mm -hmm. equal because both have first time starting quarterbacks playing arguably the best team in college football. I don't think either happens, but if you had to pick, I guess I'd say Texas just because Quinn Ewers doesn't have to go try to do it in Tuscaloosa. Mm Mm-hmm. Have you seen all the uh, all all the Texas stuff? I didn't put it in the notes. Thought it was interesting. Um, Texas is having some culture issues. All of them are coming from the transfer kids from Bama. <laughs> <laughs> there, hey, there's a reason why Bama let those fuckers walk out the door now. Don't don't think there isn't for a mi- minute. Nick Saban's not losing a great player that's not a culture issue guy. Mm-hmm. Like a Jai Hall, um, the kid who you know left left Bama. I guess he uh, had a run with the leadership council of Texas and it wasn't under the best circumstances. Whatever tight end is lazy, some other running back is problematic. It's all coming out, bro. Camp just started, Zach. It literally just fucking started. Hey, they got some growing pains going on with those transfers, buddy.